History has shown us that every 10 years or so, a new mobile technology is launched. 1G in the 1980s, 2G in the 1990s, all the way up to 5G in the 2020s, with the expectation that 6G will be available in the 2030s. So, with all these new technologies coming online, the question that is often asked is, are we actually turning any of them off? Well, the first generation technology in the UK, which was called TAX, was finally shut down in 2001, approximately 20 years after it actually launched. Therefore, following this rule, we would have expected all the 2G networks to have been switched off by 2010 and 3G by 2020. However, that is not the case. So, once again, the big question we need to try and answer is when will they actually be turned off? So, as we try to answer that question, let us first begin by reviewing the global mobile subscriber forecast as proposed by Ericsson in their 2022 mobility report. Here we can see that 4G, or LTE, has increased year on year since 2011, all the way up to 2021, before it actually starts to drop off slightly. 5G, which began in 2019, is expected to increase year on year until it eventually overtakes those of 4G in 2027. However, the number of 2G subscribers, which peaked in 2012, continue to drop, although by 2027, there is still an expectation that there will be more than 500 million subscribers. Likewise, 3G shows a similar profile, but once again, by 2027, there is still an expectation that there will be approximately 700 million 3G subscribers operating somewhere in the world. Clearly, the numbers of 2G and 3G subscribers have decreased substantially over the past 10 years. But has this been reflected by any mobile service providers actually taking the opportunity to switch off their legacy technologies and refarm the valuable radio spectrum? Not to mention also saving significant cost by not having to maintain legacy network infrastructure. Well, according to the Global Mobile Suppliers Association, 2G networks began being switched off in 2015, whilst 3G networks started to be turned off in 2020. Returning to Ericsson's 2022 mobility report, we can take this opportunity to review any regional variations between the proportion of mobile subscribers having the capability to use either a 2G, 3G, 4G or 5G network. To begin with, in Western Europe, it is expected that by 2027, 83% of subscribers will be 5G capable. However, 2G still represents 1%. Moving to North America, a similar picture can be seen, with 90% of subscribers being 5G capable. But this time, it is 3G which is still hanging on with 1%. Dropping down to Latin America, 4G and 5G still represents the greater proportion. But interestingly, 2G and 3G are expected to equate to 17% of the subscribers. Furthermore, this is extenuated when we move to the Middle East and Africa, with the expectation that 5G will only reach 16% by 2027, whereas 2G and 3G will still be at 21% and 27% respectively. Moving on, in Central and Eastern Europe, it is anticipated that both 2G and 3G will have disappeared by 2027, Whereas in North East Asia, the trend looks very similar to Western Europe, with 5G representing the greatest share and 2G still holding on with 1%. India, Nepal and Bhutan expect to have the majority of 4G subscribers, although 5G is not too far behind, however. There is still expected to be 5% of subscribers still using legacy 2G and 6G networks. And finally, Southeast Asia and Oceania expect to see 91% of the subscriber base using either 4G or 5G. But once again, 
3G is still active with 6%. So, returning to the question we posed at the beginning of this telecom bite, why are 2G and 3G networks still operating today? Well, this may be down to several factors. To begin with, the cost of a mobile device needs to be taken into consideration. Taking a cursory look on the internet, it is possible today to purchase a 2G radio module, a key component of a mobile phone, for less than one US dollar. This compares to $34 for a 4G radio module and $120 for one which can support 5G. As such, the $1,000 5G capable smartphone may be commercially viable in some regions of the world, but there are many countries where this would represent significantly more than the average monthly income. As such, mobile service providers need to consider not only the cost of upgrading their network infrastructure, but also whether the subscriber base can actually afford the latest technology. When we consider packet switch data on both 2G and 3G networks, we often just assume that we are talking about mobile phones and subscribers downloading emails and accessing web pages on the internet. However, that would be wrong because these networks for some time now have also been supporting telemetry or machine type communications. For example, smart meters recording the amount of electricity, gas or water a consumer has used typically use these legacy technologies to connect back onto the utility company's networks. In many of these cases, the mobile service providers have signed extended contracts to support connectivity. So they must either bear the cost of upgrading all of the devices to 4G or 5G, or as is happening, continue to maintain the networks into the future. That said, these networks will be carrying very limited traffic, so they can certainly be scaled back, enabling resources such as radio frequency bands to be moved to 4G and 5G. Finally, we should also consider that although we work in the industry and perhaps find technology interesting, not everyone is as fascinated with the latest equipment and accessing the hottest applications. For example, for many elderly subscribers, all they require from a mobile device is to simply make calls and perhaps send a text message or two. To some, a fully featured smartphone may be a step too far, as they need to set up an account with app stores and configure the phone to send and receive emails. As such, they may perhaps rather just stay on their old but functional 2G phone.